Hi there, this is Steve from Open Flight Solutions, and today we're going to go through the process of upgrading a flight box to add AHARS capabilities to it. So here you see a flight box in its original configuration, and we'll take this and we will upgrade it, add the new top, and get it ready to run. So here you see the full set of parts that comes with the upgrade kit. We have the new top, the new fan, the AHARS board itself, a sticker cover that goes over the top that shows you which LEDs are on. We have a new pigtail, which is used for remote uh, powered GPS antenna. We have the backup battery for the GPS, and we have a set of three standoffs that are used for connecting the, uh, the board to the box itself. So those are the parts that you have. Before we can actually start assembling the new pieces, we need to actually disassemble the flight box. First, we're going to take off the top by removing the three screws which hold it on. Keep these screws as you'll be reusing them later on in the process to put the new top on. Once you've got those removed, take the top off and disconnect the fan. The next thing we're going to want to do is remove the four screws uh, and nuts that hold the existing fan in. So we're going to be replacing the, the fan, we'll be reusing the screws. The next task is to actually put the new fan onto the new top with the screws recovered from the last step. Take the fan, making sure that the sticker side is facing towards you in this case. It's a little bit different than before. Put it on the inside of the case and line it up so that the holes are lined up. Just as with the other, on the outside you'll see where the uh, screws go through. Put one in. Lock it down with the nut. And repeat for the other three. So you've got all four screws locked into place. So you've got them on there, go ahead and tighten them up with a screwdriver. You can see the fan through there. And again, you're going to want to put a dab, just a tiny dab, of either Loctite or super glue on the four screws so that they don't vibrate loose. Now before you put this together, make sure that the glue or the Loctite is completely dry especially with super glue. Super glue is somewhat caustic and can actually damage parts inside the uh, system if you don't get it dry before you put it all back together. After the fan's been attached, the next thing we're going to want to do is put on the pigtail that we use for the external antenna. This is for the GPS. Now, the External antenna pigtail connects through the hole you see here at the end of the, uh, the case, right next to the light pipes. And you're going to want to make sure to keep it oriented vertically because we're going to need to snap this MCX jack into the top of the, uh, the AHARS board once it's all mounted. So you'll slide that down in, keeping this as close to vertical as possible. Then on the far end, you're going to want to put on, on the outside the star washer. Don't use the lock washer, it adds too much extra, um, takes up too much thread, and then tighten that up. You may need a pair of needle nose pliers to get this good and tight. Uh, if you've got a wrench, you can also use that. Use the needle nose to hold the uh, nut on the inside to keep it from turning. So, so once we have the top assembled, the next thing we're going to want to do is the one bit of assembly that's required on the board itself. So here you see the board. There's our MCX jack on it. That is the built-in GPS antenna. Now remember, it will work either with the built-in antenna or you can use the remote powered antenna, either way. Um, the thing we need to plug in is this backup battery. The backup battery is what allows you to do a warm start rather than a cold start every time we plug the thing in or turn it on. Now you'll notice that the battery has a plus on one side and a minus on the other. And you'll notice that this battery holder on the top has a plus on this side over here closer to that power jack 
and a minus on this side. So just make sure that those line up and snap it into place. That's really all there is to it, to preparing the, uh, the board for installation. So to show you where the, uh, the board is going to connect, it goes onto the pin header that previously had the fan connected, this set of 40 pins that you see right here along that side. Now to put this into place, we're going to actually need to remove these three screws, the one there, the one there, and the one there, in order to install our standoffs. Those are what hold the board in place level. Now we can't actually get a standoff in next to that little audio jack that's on the Raspberry Pi down in here, so just leave that black screw in place. But remove the three here, because we're going to use those uh, to actually hold the uh, board to the standoffs. So here you see the standoffs. They're just little nylon, um, you know, basically bits, with uh, a hole, which is a number 440 on one side, and a screw. Those, these are basically going to replace the screws that we just pulled out. Now the easiest way to get them in, ironically, is to go ahead and put the screw that you took out in the last step into it and get it down so that it's only moderately tight. It'll, it'll go all the way down. And then you're going to position it where you need in the pie. And then you're going to use the screw to be able to spin it down into the standoff. Or pardon me, into the, uh, the boss on the bottom of the case. You're going to repeat that for the other three. You don't want to get it too tight because then you'll have to work really hard to get the screws back out of the standoffs, which you don't want to have to do. So get it moderately tight, but not ridiculously so. Yes, it'll click a little bit as it twists past the power input there, but that's all right. So here you see all three of those standoffs are now mounted. Now you're going to need to take the screws back out. You're just, we're just using those as a, uh, a means of getting the thing into place. You may find it easiest to do that by holding the standoff still with a pair of pliers. Needle nose work pretty well. And then removing the screws. Okay, once you have those screws removed, we're actually ready to mount the board. So here's your board, and again, the board has a connector here, which is going to tie into those 40 pins. Now the trick is you need to get it to line up. It's going to come very close to these pieces you see right here, and if you look at it at an angle like that, you can kind of see making sure that it's lining up. You can also tell because the screw holes will all line up, and it'll sit down. It'll snap into place, and once it's down and in place, you're ready to put the screws back into those now through the board. Okay, now that we have the board mounted, the next thing that we're going to need to do is connect up the, uh, the pieces that go on there. And before we do that, actually, there's one other step. Take a quick look here. You'll notice that there's a small um, bump that is added onto the uh, the edge of the new top. Now that, actually, if you have the pre-assembled FB1X uh, version of the flight box, will fit into the little channel that's right there where we've carved out for the USB extender. Now if you've got this, which is a, a traditional um, flight box, you, that won't be cut out. So what you're going to want to do is simply snap this off. It's set so that you can grab it, twist it, and break it off using a pair of pliers, uh, you could also cut it off using, you know, uh, a cargo or a box knife. So here, you see it after I've clipped it off, and now it's flush. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is connect this pigtail to that MCX jack, and this fan power uh, cable to that fan power plug on the board. Now the easiest way to do this is probably to curl it around like so, plugging it in and do the same kind of thing, just reach over and plug this in. It only goes one way, can't get it backwards. And I 
unless you really force it hard. And then set it down. Now remember, your two um, side holes need to match up with these two uh, mount points. And the one down here between the two antennas matches up with that one. And these three light pipes are going to sit right on top of the board where they uh, show the LEDs, the, uh, the status indicators we have. So bring it down, get it into place. You'll feel it kind of move around a little bit. Look at the sides and you'll see when you've got it lined up. All right, so now we've got that lined up. Take a screw. It takes a little bit of wiggling to get everything into place. Because we've got the pigtail kind of springing around in there and we've got a few other things in there that make it a little bit of a challenge to get everything lined up perfectly. But once you do, the screws will go straight in without any friction or difficulty. So there you go. Got one, two, three screws mounted. Got our fan, you know, there on top. Once you have the three case screws holding the case top on, the last thing to do is put the sticker on. Now note that the sticker has a knockout here. Just punch that white section out and then remove it and set it so that it covers the, uh, the holes here but doesn't cover any of the fan and it lines up so that ADS-B lines up with the top of those three LED indicators, GPS with the middle, and power with the bottom. Once you've got that on, you're done. Your uh, flight box has been upgraded with the AHARS module.